for another tip, tricks, and other random thoughts. Everybody's been messaging me on how to find bass. It's been an, an exceptionally tough year this year in Ontario. Post spawn has lasted forever and fishing is changing here in Ontario. The weather's changing. There's new people who are trying to find bass for the first time and there's experienced anglers who are having a hard time finding fish because they're not in their normal spots. So I want to give you some tips, tricks, and other thoughts on how I have been using search bait, my electronics, and what I'm actually looking for out on the lake. The biggest thing that we have at our disposal is Navionics and fish finders, chart plotters. I use my Garmin unit to look at the map to not only cancel out areas, but to find areas that I want to go and try and fish. All fishing spots aren't created equal, and as much as I've fished Rice Lake over the years, I spent a ton of time looking at my chart and finding new areas to go and try. It is very overwhelming, not only to go to lakes that are changing that we know from the past, but to go to new lakes and try to find fish quick. So I'm gonna use my Navionics on my Garmin units, and if I don't have those, Another great tool I have is the Navionics app on my cell phone. That is going to help, you know, with those northern lakes that I don't have chips for. I can just pick up my phone and use this and it's got all the details. Great way to find fishing spots. The next step, what are you looking for to find fish? So we've, we've got our Navionics, we're looking for fishing spots. This is our imaginary lost fear fishing lake and we're gonna try to find some fish on this. First, we're gonna look for largemouth bass. We, want, we heard this is a great largemouth bass lake. It's full of hogs, heard rumors. This is how I would do it, especially on this year. This year the water is really warm, we're in post spawn. If I'd never been to the lake before, I would start by finding finding out which one of these bays has beds in them. I'll physically go drive into there and if I see old beds that have been used then I know the fish are either in this bay somewhere or I need to find deeper water in and around because after large, big large mouth spawn, they like to go to the first drop off and hang out in some deep weed and do a little pouting. So that's what I'm looking for here. The biggest common mistake I think people make is you find a big bay like this and it is just choked with weeds. It's huge. Huge. It, it, it's a 15 acre back bay and it's choked with weeds. But if we come down to this back bay, maybe it has sparse weed. Maybe it has some rock on the bottom. It is going to be a lot easier to fish these sporadic weeds with rocks around them than a bay that is just full of milfoil. Doesn't mean the fish aren't in here. It just means in a short period of time, you're not, you're not gonna be able to pick through enough holes to catch any fish. So if I was me, I would choose this bay over this bay to start. If we're looking for smallmouth bass, they like to spawn in sandy bays. So let's, I come down here, lots of sand on the shoreline, and I see old bed. Small mouth will be finished spawning and over their post spawn. So by the time our season opens, the small mouth should be right up on those sand flats. If they're not in sand flats, what I'm looking for on the edge are small rock piles. Anywhere for large mouth or small mouth, you find transitions points where the weed changes, where rock turns to mud, where mud turns back to rock gravel, anytime you can find some kind of change, rock and weed versus sand, sand running into rock. Anytime there's a change, fish like to hang out on changes. The other thing that smallmouth like to do is they like to hang out in deeper water. Find islands with rocks or shoals. Maybe there's a shoal where this water is 40 feet and the top of this is five. Fish will move up and down on those. It is very ma well mapped out on your Navionics phone app and on the Navionics on your garments. It is basically all the information is for you right there. Now, we've chosen a fishing spot. We know how to use our electronics to find, help us find a fishing spot before we ever get to the lake. What baits do we throw? So now we know how to find this fishing spot. Now, how do we find out where the fish are in that fishing spot? The number one bait, rod and reel combo that has helped me out so far this year is my 7-4 Heavy Glass Tatua Chatterbait Spinnerbait Rod. You see this right here? The Chatterbait has changed the way I fished. It is change the way that I find fish. If I can't get them to hit on the chatterbait, I switch up to a spinnerbait. With this rod and reel combo, 7-3 gear ratio, Tatua CT, I can cast a mile. I can cover so much area fast that I'm not only seeing if I can catch fish, but I'm having a look at the lay of the land. Visual markers now, is there docks? Is there boathouses? Is there trees sticking out of the water? What kind of weed is here? Is there reeds? So I'm casting, looking for fish as I go. And to be honest, for the most part, I would say that 60 or 65% of my fish this year have come on moving bait. You can cover a ton of water with a frog. You can cover a ton of water with a crankbait. You're looking for smallies out deep on one of those shoals or on one of those islands. A jerkbait is the perfect way 
to find smallmouth. We've covered a ton of water with our chatter bait. We start catching a fish here, a fish there. We start to notice there's a bit of a pattern happening. This is the time to break out the flipping jig. Maybe your senko setup. Fish and smallmouth, sight fish and smallmouth. You, you've been casting and you start seeing a lot of fish. Or you find that those that sporadic weed full milfoil, then you're gonna break out your flipping rod, your craw bait. I like to flip cross, and you're gonna start working that area. So basically, use the electronics you have, find out where the fish were spawning and work backwards to find out where they are now. Use search baits to cover as much water as possible. When we were fishing the tournament in Northern Ontario last weekend, I killed my trolling motor battery. I'd never been to the lake. I used that thing on 100% all day, just trying to cover as much water as possible and we ran across three giants. If you can fish half a lake, a quarter of a lake versus one thirty-second of a lake or one eighth of a lake, you're going to run across more fish. You have a better chance of putting more fish in the boat. And the other thing, when you do find them, if you start seeing smallmouth all over the place or you catch two or three largemouth out of some sporadic weed on your chatterbait, that's the time to stop. Start working the area nice and slow, but also don't be afraid that if you don't get any hits on your slow moving bait, setups like your flipping rod or your sanko, go back to what is working. That is the biggest thing that you can do. As soon as you use all these pieces and put it together to find out something that works, remember what that looks like, and then you should be able to use it anywhere on that lake on that day to catch fish. And it'll, it, it just makes your, your searching for fish quicker and quicker. You're trying to get answers to questions to put it all together to put more fish in your boat. I hope this helps everybody find more fish. Use your electronics, cover a ton of water, use your eyes to see what you can see, and when you find them, slow down and give them what you want. And then just repeat the process over and over and over again. I hope this helps you catch more fish. Have any more questions, Put drop it in the comments, and we'll see you soon. Yeah!